there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer from MamaForFur.com. It's the home of smarter saving, smarter spending and smarter living strategies. Today, this is a budget with me video. It's my May 2019 budget, our real family budget. I'm going to show you the exact amounts that we spend on certain bills. I'm also going to share with you our money stacks percentages. So the money stacks method is six buckets of money that you use to design life on your terms, to enjoy it and actually create the life of your dreams. We create financial and time freedom by consistently investing and saving our money as well as using their money to grow and educate ourselves. So I'm gonna explain it all in this video. I'll leave a link below that actually talks through the money stack method. So if you're looking for a money management system that isn't all about penny pinching or paying off debt, you might be excited to try this method with your family. I'm a working mum from Glasgow, two small boys under the age of six, one husband, two cats. So this video is all about showing you the real life money that we are using to create life on our terms. And especially this month, if you are following the Money Stacks method yourself, please share with me your kind of ideal percentages that you're going for, your ideal spending, how you're actually using some of your funds, like your fund money or your education and growth fund. Let me know in the comments below. Well, hi everyone, this is my first budget video today and I'm actually doing it a different way. I'm going to do a proper setup with my paper budgeting books and these were kindly gifted. I'm currently using the Family Life book. This is a 2019 edition. Um, and we're going to use me and then I'm also going to be showing you their busy days planner so these were gifted I'll leave the links below if you want to get them yourself I'm going to show you how I plan and budget for my family I like to basically keep a paper version so that I've got easy reference when I'm doing that like, our kind of household budgeting and scheduling I know what's happening and um, it also allows me to do my cash envelopes and then you will see I'm going to take you over to the computer show you the autopilot money system which is my digital spreadsheets that I use absolutely every single week with my family it allows me to take this information about what our bills will cost and I'll do my money stacks calculations I'm going to share with you a number of our bills the exact amounts that we currently pay we are a family in Scotland I've got two small boys one husband two cats so our money is relative to a two or three bedroom house in Glasgow, the cost. So by any means, don't think that these values I'm going to show you are what you should be aiming for. I'm going to share with you our money stack percentages right now. So let's start right away and I'll give you our actual May budget, the amounts of bills that we are paying. The first thing is our mortgage and rent. And at the moment, we are paying currently 670 five pounds 42 pence now that actually is a monthly amount and that has an overpayment of 10 percent of our monthly amount i follow the 10 percent rule for any single debt that we have which means that we pay the minimum plus 10 percent so we're actually eating into the debt faster than what the bank or the lender want us to do we pay 10 percent automatically as a direct debit on top every single month the first of the month it comes out and so that means that our mortgage is 25 years will be paid off in 24 years so we've only got Got like 21 years left of our mortgage or so to pay and um, so that's a really simple way to do it we are also on a fixed mortgage at the moment until October time I believe of this year so that amount will be fixed every month and then we'll make sure that we go into another fixed rate likely our electricity and gas actually is two separate parts um, and that totals 123 pounds per month currently for both of those so what I will be doing is that's quite a high amount, I feel. So I'm going to start in a couple of months, I'm going to do some digging around and see who's got cheaper rates. Right now, we do not have Sky or any kind of cable TV, but we do play broadband. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that broadband under the TV amount. So let me just do that. So our broadband this month always stays the same and we are on a fixed deal as well for £35. And that's super fast broadband that we've got in our area. Insurance, well, we only have one insurance payment comes out every month and the rest of them I've actually paid off in full for the year and I have those as sinking funds so we have our pet insurance which is currently in at £12.57 that cat insurance is actually due in a couple months time and what I'm hoping is we will pay that off in full and I can have a sinking fund instead so I'll show you my sinking funds as well the kind of amounts that we're putting aside for key things in our life too telephone bills we've got two mobile phone bills we have bought our mobiles completely outright so we do not have contracts that fill that up in any way so we have two and that totals to £23 every month. I have a £10 contract and my husband has a £13 contract. 
So for groceries and petrol, at the moment we budget £300 for our groceries for a family for, for four weeks. Petrol at the moment has actually been cut down considerably and I'll explain why. I'm only going to budget £140 this month. It used to be closer to £250-£300 because of the type of jobs that we were doing but I'll explain why that's now dropped, dramatically dropped. The last thing is of course our council tax. So we pay water as part of our council tax up here in Scotland and currently our council tax has just gone up actually to £207. So it's gone up by about £10 since last year but that's okay. Again we could actually pay that off in full, set up a sinking fund. I'm okay with paying the 10 payments and then, and then having two months off later in the year. So I like to have all these amounts just so I know what bills come out. Um, our bills all come out on the first of the month but what I do is then I'm going to include some of the kind of other little treats you'll see as we get down further. So there's a couple of other expenses that we have every single month. One that we do have is called a factor fee and um, because we live in a new build area we actually pay a factor that he maintains the grounds and the garden and it's a communal kind of area so we pay that and the whole estate pays that per house so that's £13 a month and that doesn't ever change you can't get cheaper rates for that. Our other out going that we do as part of our fund money is we get Spotify every month so um, that's just our little treat for the family. I absolutely adore music and so I will use it on my phone and be listening to podcasts and everything as much as I can with Spotify. So that's really our main bills. We also have a sinking fund for Costco and our cats. So once a month we will usually go to Costco which is not far from us in Glasgow get the cats wet food for the two cats, dry food to supplement the wet food and their kitty litter and it comes roughly to £50. It's probably about £20 for the wet food, £10 for the dry food and then £10, £15 for the cat litter. So let me actually talk you through some of our actual money stacks percentages. So the first thing as I've said in many videos my pension comes out my employer wage without me ever seeing it that's why I love pension contributions where you get free money in top up from your employer and the government so my particular pension I have maxed it out so I put in a total of 15% from my wage before I ever get it my employer puts in money and also about the government contributions on top so because our family never sees effectively that money, I do not count it as part of my money stack. I just know that it goes out automatically every single month. Let me talk you through my money stack percentages then. So the first thing I will say, the May budget is actually the first budget with quite a dramatic life change. So if you are aware, I was obviously in hospital in February and this month is the first month I am back to work but we've actually changed our household quite dramatically. We're designing life on our, our terms and so actually our household income has dropped about 40 to 45 percent because we're actually just changing how we're doing things in terms of how we're looking after our kids, how we're working. It's a complete change. So with that is a new budget. So what I really love in the Box Fresh Planner as well is they have this section at the start which is for your goals. You know I am so enthusiastic about goals and achievements. Um, and I just really love this spread. So I'm going to actually write down some of the goals for me. We don't have any birthdays. Special days, as I said, we've got the 5k run. That's on the 18th of May. We're going to do that 5k charity run. That was in the diary. And then on the 25th, I've also got the Manchester trip, which I'm really excited about. My goals for the home well, for me, um, we generally do, I kinda, I'd like to do a declutter and organise declutter and organise before holiday. For work I obviously have a day job where I have set work and goals for there but in particular for my blog, my YouTube channel um, and my actual business that I enjoy helping others my goal in particular will be to create four to six content videos and blog posts. And this month in particular I feel inspired that it should particularly be about pensions and some of the investment basics. So that's what you're going to see covering up from me in May um, because I feel like with the government changes to pensions it's so vital that maybe a little bit more is understood about how they can really affect your financial freedom. In terms of my me time I want to commit to also do my workouts three times a week. I do them usually in the morning and then I also because I've got that run in May I want to commit to one times a five or 7k run once a week.
As I say, we don't have any birthdays. In May, I hope to I'll fill that out and that's just a, such a lovely little section. So if we go back, then what would happen is normally as each day comes, and this starts actually from the 29th, I would usually use one section for my Ivy Lee list. So the Ivy Lee list is like a to-do list, but it's your absolute priorities are going to move you forward. Usually between three to five things you would write down every day. And I use the first box generally in this spread, which is a weekly spread for my Ivy Lee. The second box I then tend to use for what's actually happening if I have to remember things for school, if I have to remember things for work, perhaps on my YouTube channel, I'll write them down there. Then the third box I will actually use for my meal planning. So this is where I've still to fill this out um, and I'll plan ahead for the month as much as I can to do that batch shop and then we know what we're having. Because we're a busy family, I prefer knowing like a week or two weeks in advance the food is in and I know that I can pull it out of the freezer. So now that I've get, done the basic spread in my diary ready to use, I've got my budgets all lined up, what we're going to actually spend them on. I'm going to quickly show you the autopilot money spread sheet. I also use this along with the physical copies of my budget so I can keep track and can work out those percentages for my money stacks methods. So we're on the autopilot money system which is my collection of spreadsheets. If you are serious about financial freedom, security, budgeting, needing help with debt management, it's really the one kind of tool that I use with my family that is designing life on our terms. So maybe it'd be useful for you too. And I'll leave the link down below to my Etsy store if you fancy checking it out. I'm basically just going to talk you through how those values on paper then get put into my spreadsheet very roughly and also share with you our money stack percentages for this month ahead. So what I will say is the values that you can see on the screen are just mock-up values. They're not our real percentages. I want to talk you through the, how I place in our actual values. So the first of all, I would simply put in all our fixed bills. I would then put in our variable bills, which is obviously food, petrol, and how I use this information is then in the breakdown of the money stacks. So if you're someone who uses cash envelopes, for example, this could be really useful for you to do the calculations for how much you need in each envelope every single week or month. What I do is if we're having a cash only week I'll actually add up my food, my petrol and fund money and perhaps even some of the educational and giving money and I will divide it by the number of weeks in the month. So very fundamental if there's four weeks divide it by four. If there's four and a half weeks you know how it works sometimes I'll do four and a half weeks and then that's my amount for each envelope. I don't like to separate out this is only food this is petrol. I prefer knowing for seven days I've got a grand total amount if we use it up it's gone and and then we need to just kind of adapt life as we need it. So that is the budgeting sheet. If you don't have one, you like paper, that's fine. I actually use both. I use the electronic one to play around and have fun with and see where I can manipulate. Um, I was obviously talking about that I plan to reduce our essential stack from 74% down to 65%. This is how I do it. I go in the spreadsheet and I play around. So the next spreadsheet I update every single month is the sinking funds. Now with my tool, it actually tells you how much you need to save every single month to hit your target for a sinking fund. Um, I split basically Christmas, holidays, we also do car maintenance, the car and the household large bills. I pay them off once a year rather than try and split into a direct debit. It works cheaper for you. It's usually a lot of hidden charges in there without you realising even though it's such a small charge. I like to save up all year and just pay it off in one and that's why our fixed payments every month are low but I've also budgeted in some of a sinking fund to cover those bigger expenses. Finally, if you're someone who is struggling obviously with debt management, don't forget there is tools on the spreadsheet that show you how much you could save when you're going to be debt free using the snowball or the avalanche method. So the final thing is of course here are our percentages for the month. So I shared with you our life has changed in the past month. We are designing life a little bit differently. That means our household income reduced by about 40 to 45% which is huge. As a result of that though, I knew we had a structure that allowed fun us to grow as a family and also achieve our goals. So these percentages show you what we're doing with our money. So the first thing is we have financial freedom using an investment ISA and my pension. Our investment ISA, the particular funds that I actually invest in, and this is no way that you need to do it with your money, do your research, be confident, seek out a financial advisor if you are unsure in any way. Personally, the funds that I invest in through Vanguard, I've seen a 7.6% return on our investments this year. So the money that I've put in consistently, little by little every month, is getting that level of return. Remember, look at my investment videos. I'm not 
not going to explain too much, but remember the stock market is volatile, it goes up and down. However, when you invest in index funds, particularly low cost index funds or good broad spectrum mutual funds that have low charges, you will actually see obviously the world always increases. So over a long period of time, this is not a get rich quick scheme when we're investing, long periods of time, five, 10, 15 years, we see a good level of return better than if we had it in a savings account. The next thing I like to share with you is what is our passive income? Okay, so our passive income, if I didn't touch our pension or our investments, didn't add a single penny this moment on, how much would we have every single month when I chose to retire at 55 at the earliest? If I did that, you will see we would have 208 pounds extra every month if we only saw a 5% return. If we saw though that closer to that 9.8%, which the S&P 500 has had consistently for about 100 years, the overall average is about 9.8% over that long period of time. Remember, this isn't just each individual year, over the long term, then we would roughly see over a thousand pounds. It's actually 1,100 pounds we would have every month if we saw that 9.8 return every single year. However, this is just to get you excited, okay? I have the goal to retire well before 55 using my investments. Then I can get my pension at 55, my government pension perhaps at 65 or 70, whatever the year may be. But this is me actually taking control and generating income. What I will say is that passive income might seem small at the moment, but just watch it go because every single month I commit to adding more to it. It's purely if I didn't do a single thing, I have created money ongoing for the rest of our life in the future. And our savings rate at the moment is roughly 22% of our total income if you looked at pre-tax. So that is including my 15% that I put in a pension every month. That's obviously pre-tax, don't see it. The government add money to it, beautiful. I don't need to worry about it. And my 10% that we are still achieving even with that huge drop in our household income right now. So this is our money stacks for the month of May ahead. 74% of our budget will be on essentials. That's food, petrol, paying bills. We've got our mortgage overpayment in there as well. Then we move on to our financial independence stack. That's 10%. That is a no brainer for me. It's so fundamental to create passive incomes for the long term for the years ahead. That is my two stacks that absolutely must be included in my budget. The next stack after that is our long-term savings. So we're working towards paying off car insurance in full every year, Christmas, birthdays, holidays, home improvements. This time I managed to get 5.5% going towards that. Then I'll also do our education and growth fund, which is 5.5% as well. Then our fund money and our giving money is both 2.5%. So that equals 100% in total, of course. So the education and growth fund this month, I will be using some of that money towards my own mentoring and coaching program that I'm involved in. So for the next year, I'm part of a mastermind group and a learning group, and I'm really excited to develop in that way, develop my own skills. Um, and then my husband is also doing some certificates as well in a particular career that he's interested in. And then our oldest son, he actually takes part in some little art classes. So everybody is getting a share of the pie. Our youngest, I actually use that education and growth money towards a couple of mornings a week he goes towards a creche and a little bit of nursery before he's old enough. So everyone develops in some way and we all get benefit to grow. These numbers, of course, are on the money right now. I could get a pay rise, perhaps I could change job. But right now, that is the percentages that we're using in our budget with the lifestyle change that we've managed to put in place. My goal certainly for the next couple of months is to make that more towards 64% for essentials and then getting the rest closer to my ideals of hopefully 10% for everything else. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed today's budget video. I love sharing our budget with you because it's all about knowing that other people are doing the same journey and hopes for life as you are. As always, leave me a thumbs up and especially a comment to let me know if you've enjoyed this and I'll see you very soon.